this belongs to a multi-factor disease. There are two important mutations we mentioned as the fact of five Leiden. There is also fact of nine Leiden. Don't worry about it because <coughs> we work in our lab on fact of nine Leiden mutation. But fact of five Leiden is more prevalent in the population in terms of the fact in the cleavage of the fact of five by destroying the fact of five four fact of eight. Example by other proteases, and that is going to be not clean at all because of the lack of the particular uh, amino acids, and therefore, factor 5 will be in abundance. And because of the profile of existence, there's going to be a continuous, a persistent creation of a clot of fibrin, and therefore, you lead to numbers that is one particular aspect. And the second thing is the prothrombin mutation, which is in the UTR, okay, untranslated regions, and that particular mutation is going to lead to the stability of the messenger RNA. That means the messenger RNA is going to be much more stable, and the stability is going to lead to more production of prothrombin, and that more production of prothrombin is more thrombin, and more thrombin means more fibrinogen to fibrinogen conversion. So that's what we dealt with. That is the multifactorial we have. Another disorder which is of great significance is this Hirschsprung disease. We talked about Hirschsprung disease briefly before, but if this is a disorder where the clonic ganglia are going to be defective, and therefore the peristaltic motion of colon is not going to be perfect, and that is why your feces are accumulated in the colon. Sometimes the colon will so expand that there's only so much distensibility to the colon, but once the distensibility is lost, colon will bust and the fecal matter will come into your other cavity and therefore it may lead to inflammation, people will die or therefore it's a very serious disorder. And in this disorder you have got this pie chart. In the pie chart you can see that the larger pie, larger piece of the pie is about 55 sit pairs. It has been collected and therefore you can see that the gene of the allele is located on 10q11.1, 3p21, and 19q12. Okay? These are the genes located. But, but if you look at the other small piece of the pie, it says 19q2 but not 3p21. And 10q as well as 19q are there, <laughs> but one more allele is missing. Despite the fact that two alleles are, you know, one allele is missing, you still can get the result. That means the multiple alleles are contributed to the same phenotype. Okay. So it is more complex, that's why I'm trying to tell you. So it is not, even though there are three alleles, sometimes you can get two alleles shared in another seed pair, there are different type of alleles, another seed pair, there are different types of alleles shared. As long as there are two of them shared, you're going to get the dog that's Okay? So the genes which have been listed on this particular Hirschsprung disease are RET gene, which is tyrosine kinase receptor, and also the glial cell line derived neurotrophic factor, which is a ligand for the RET. RET is a receptor, and the, uh, and the ligand is, is a neurotrophic factor. So therefore, obviously, the receptor is affected, the ligand is affected, we want to get this off. So another one is the endothelial receptor B, which is nothing but a G protein coupled receptor. I'm sure you heard of G protein coupled receptors, right? The G protein coupled receptor are those proteins which are coupled in the cytoplasmic by this is a transmembrane, seven transmembrane protein, which is linked to the G protein on the cytoplasmic side. Any ligand that binds to the GPCR is going to induce a signaling cascade of events which would lead to the, whatever the cell is going to do. Okay? In, for example, if it's a platelet, it's going to aggregate cancerous cells, it may secret some molecules which may, be, uh, which may be important for the growth of the cancer cell and so on and so forth. <coughs> these cells have multiple functions. So in this case, there is an endothelial B, the receptor B, is the GPCR, for which the ligand is, is also there, that is endothelial free. Okay? So endothelial by definition is produced by endothelial. Okay? So these are three genes, or four genes, which are important for this process of uh, the Hashtag. But 
now we come to another very, very classical multifactorial disorder for which we still don't know the basis for it. Yeah. Much for this, a little has been identified, but still more research has to be done. <coughs> one of them is classical type 1 diabetes. There are, in diabetes, there are two types of diabetes. One is type 1 and type 2. We all know that. Type 1 is purely dependent on insulin. Whereas the other one is a non-insulin dependent diabetes, okay? In insulin dependent diabetes, insulin is lacking. Insulin is, is not just a simple insulin gene mutation. It's not a simple insulin gene deletion or insertion or whatever. That is not the reason why you get insulin dependent diabetes. Insulin dependent diabetes comes because of destruction of the beta islands of Langerhans and pancreas. Pancreas, there are alpha cells, beta cells, and other all sorts of other cells are there. But beta cells are the ones which are beta cells of beta islands of Langerhans, we call it. And these cells, these, these insulin dependent diabetes, is because of the autoimmune destruction of the beta islands of Langerhans. In other words, the patient will carry antibodies, which are self-antibodies, that is, they will destroy his own cells. But in general, we destroy the cells, and the immunological defense is for those which are entering into the body, that which is foreign immunological defense acts on it. But in this case, even though these are your own cells, the autoimmune, whether the antibodies which are made against your own cells, will destroy your cells, that is autoimmunity. There are a lot of autoimmune disorders like systemic lupus, and all sorts of things are there. And, and in particular, antibodies are against some small RNAs as well. So if you have antibodies against the SNPs, which are small RNA uh, proteins, all sorts of splicing pathways of multiple genes can go wrong because this is just an antibody against the splicing mechanism proteins. And therefore, you can get destruction based on that, several proteins which are really processed by several splicing pathways. But in this case, we don't know the mechanism yet, but I'm just giving a general example of autoimmunity. And particularly, insulin-dependent diabetes arises only in children, not in adults, very rarely in adults. Okay? These children will develop autoimmune antibodies, self-antibodies, and therefore the beta islands of Langerhans are gone, insulin is gone, once insulin is gone, you don't have controlled regulation of glucose, and therefore you raise the glucose levels. But it is interesting that 10% of all cases are there, you know, all, uh, all cases of children, and one out of 500 in whites. Okay? But if you take a look at the monozygotic twin percentages, there are about 40% in monozygotic twin. What does it tell you? Right there, the figure tells you 60% is environmental. Okay. So, and the rest of the percentage is not What is the most important one of the egotic percentage? So, dizygotic twins is only 5%. That is also telling 40 is higher, 5 is lower, so therefore it is definitely genetic, but the component of environmental factor is much more. They, in, the, in the previous now, now we have got a lot more research done on this area, but in the olden times, what they have focused is on what are called major histone compatibility complex, that is called HLA. These are also called major histocompatibility MHC, or histocompatible leukocyte antigens, that's the old nomenclature. Okay? Now, recent nomenclature is MHC. In this one, there are what are called HLA DR3 or DR4. These are low signs. These are important, these alleles are very important in insulin-dependent diabetes methods. Okay. So the DR3 and DR4, there are almost like several alleles, there lots of number of alleles are there. In fact, if you go now in the sequence technology, you are almost like a thousand alleles. But what is interesting is that one DQ beta, which is one of the alleles, which codes for class 2 mouth. There are two types of major histocompatibility complex. One is class one and class two. Okay. 
What is major histocompatibility complex? These are surface antigen cells, which will tell you that it is yours. That's all it is. It's, it's a determining. Therefore, if some other cells which are having different surface molecules are transplanted, they are going to reject those cells. Okay. Therefore, major histocompatibility complex is very essential in what is it called uh, uh, rejection of the foreign material. Okay. But in this case, obviously, there is a mutation in, in one of the alleles like DQ beta. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you've got simple, don't worry about the nomenclature of valine, serine, etc. But if there is a mutation which converts into one amino acid, you are going to get an autoimmune response. That is, if, if it converts into 57 aspartic acid, you're going to get an autoimmune response. Okay? Therefore, the cells will think as if it is foreign because the compatibility is lost. Therefore, they are being destroyed, and rejection happens. Okay? And there are some cases where the major histocompatibility complex, even though they are mutated, some percentage, like 17% in this case, have got haplotypes. You know, what is a haplotype? We'll talk about it a little bit later, because we just remember now haplotype. These MSC haplotypes, are almost like, you know, even with the same haplotype percentages, okay, same haplotypes, you still have autoimmune response and rejection always happens. Okay? So people have looked for other genes. The only thing that they found is again there is some linkage to insulin promoter. There are some random repeats in the insulin promoter which are varied from allele to allele. But there is one of them. And the CTLA4, which is an immune regulatory gene, there is one, another one, and a protein phosphatase gene. So these are the three genes so far they identified, in addition to the major histocompatibility complex that is changing into different kinds of amino acids. Okay? So what about type 2 diabetes? Type 2 diabetes is also multifactorial. Type 2 diabetes is very unique because it has got several issues. It is not insulin dependent. Insulin gene is absolutely not healthy. Level of insulin is perfectly okay. But there are various means, like for example, insulin instructs on the insulin receptors are there. And that insulin will instruct the muscle cells and things that can utilize the glucose. And if those receptors are, are missing, then we have a problem that the insulin will not instruct that, and therefore there is a slightly different, but still, it is a mechanism of action of insulin is being lost. And there are other pathways, like there are glycogen, which is stored glucose in the liver. And that glycogen, usually when there is glucose lacking, glycogen is immobilized, right? It cleans and gets into glucose molecule. So that mobilization, if it goes higher up, then also glucose level can go higher. So glucose levels can be not just pure, and gluconeogenesis, if that pathway is going to be tremendously enhanced, you're going to get higher levels of glucose. So the regulation can be in multiple pathways and multiple regions, and therefore type 2 diabetes have not been truly characterized in total as well. But is it a multifactorial disorder? Technically, yes. But on the other hand, even those single gene defects individually are also causing the disease. And therefore, you know, they are not all going to be in one family. It is not like you require all 10 genes to cause the disease. Each individual gene, like insulin receptor is lost, you are going to have a disease. Glycogen mobilization pathway, you are going to have a disease. So that is still not considered multifactorial like insulin dependent diabetes. Okay? Even though type 2 diabetes is by multiple genes. Because they are similar to the cause. Now Alzheimer's. 